Now when adding devices to be controlled by IR by the Genie, this can be done in a couple of different ways. First of all, expand the tree to connected devices and we'll see a heading there of IR devices. If you right mouse click on that to add a new IR device, it opens a little script window where we can type it in. First of all, we can give it a name. In my example, I'm going to call it Living Room TV. This can be either the location of the device you want to control, the name of the device, anything that's going to make sense to you later. We can then add the IR port that's going to be used, whether it be IR1234 or 5 is the blaster. In my example, I'm going to use IR port 1. Then in the IR code sets, we drop that down and what we've done is we've grouped all the IR devices into certain categories depending on the device that it is. Whether it be a TV, projector, cable, DVD, media player, satellite, VCR, DVD and etc etc through the list. But as being a TV, of course I'm going to select the TV group. We then select the manufacturer of TVs and as you'll see from the list, there's hundreds of them in the list for all the different manufacturers of all the products around the world. On this example that I'm going to use, I'm going to select Panasonic. Now Panasonic um, have a lot of different code sets that use, different models of TVs. If you can't find what the device, what code set it is, if you can't find the manual you can't find from Panasonic website or whatever, then a little bit of it's trial and error. If we have a look here down code sets, you'll see the various code sets that are listed um, down here. Now what I can do, I can select the first one and quite often the on and off button may be common um, from right across the, all the devices. So what I want to do is maybe I want to select that, maybe want to check some others. But now I can double click on this list here. Um, so if I double click on channel up for example, um, it will then send out the IR code for channel up for this device. If that didn't work for the particular device you're controlling, let's check a different code set. We'll try the next one. And we might go channel up, double click on it, and the channel's working up and down on my device. I can test a couple of others, volume up, volume down, um, check the TV, channel 7, um, mute, yep, and they seem to be working. So they're all the IR devices that are on the remote control for this code set. So I can click OK. We go back to the IR and you'll see that that living room TV is in the list, ready for us to use later on in the project. If I drop the code down, again we see all the buttons for the remote control, again that we can use as part of the code set um, or part of the project later on. Now I want to add another device, this time I'm going to add my Sony Blu-ray player. So again I go to IR devices, add new IR device and this case I'm going to call it you know, my Sony Blu-ray. I've got my Sony Blu-ray connected to port 2 of my IR, go to my devices, select Blu-ray go down to all the list of all the Blu-ray players that are in the system. This time I'm going to go to Sony. I'm not sure what code set it is, but I've looked at that code set. I've only got an option of one. So this time I try um, power on. Yep, power's up fine. I can go through. Um, let's go select something else that we can easily find. The eject button. Hit the eject button. No, it's not working. Hmm, bit of a worry. So we know that that code set is not the right code set for my Sony Blu-ray. Now, the next thing I can do is I can cancel out of that. I can go to what we have is the online device libraries. So when I go on vice, online device libraries, we connect. Obviously, you need the internet to be connected to be able to do this. We select the category, IR devices, what type. I can go down here and select my Blu-ray, select the manufacturer, list of manufacturers that are added after the code set of the IR code set and the Genie has been produced. We're going to go Sony, 
and I'm going to go, uh, and there's the one I want, the Model N460. We can select that. Now the notes say here it's not verified. What we mean by that is that a installer may have submitted these to us and we haven't been had that piece of equipment to verify it. But I can now go download. It says it already exists because I've done this on another demonstration. We've now imported that or we've now got that downloaded we can import. So now when I go and add IR devices, I can import that. I can go down here and select my Sony. There it is there, my Sony device. Open that up and we've now got the Sony device added. Open the device, we've got all our keys as from that remote control. That's the second way of being able to import or use IR devices. The first one we could select from the code sets within the Genie itself. The second way we added the um, from a device, online device library. And the third way we're going to look at what happens if it's not on the IR device library and we have to learn it in ourselves. Okay, so if we've got a device that um, is not on the online device library, not in the list of the options from the um, code sets, we can add them manually. So we're much the same as we did before. We want to add a new device. In this case, it's going to be a DVD player. We've got the DVD player on port 3 on my example. And again, we couldn't find it on the, we went down the list here, couldn't find that manufacturer in the list um, of this particular DVD. So I'm going to select none here. When we select none, what we can do is we can then add the keys manually. So we might have a play button, we're going to add that, a stop button, record, if I could spell it correctly, fast forward, etc. So we add all the buttons there that we um, need to control. Then what we can do is we click on that and using the IR Blaster, which is port number five, which is also the learner, I can then click on the learn button, which puts the genie into a learn mode. And now I can get the IR remote, put it into the learner, push the button, and we've got learn success. It's learned that IR code in, hopefully. If anyone's ever learned IR devices, um, you'll know that sometimes you have to do it two or three times. Now, the great thing about the Genie, of course, is that you can test the device before you go and build it onto a button. So I've just learnt the play one in. So again, I can double click on here. If I double click on that, it sends the IR, yep, that one worked fine. I can then go and do the stop, click on the learn, learn the device in. Learn it in. Okay, and it timed out. We can then try it again. Push learn. Learn it, it learned success. Double click on the stop button. No, it didn't work, so we can learn it in again. Just a matter of hitting learn again. Pushing this, the um, learn. We've learned it in again. Double click here, and the stop's now working fine. So we can go through and test all those. <coughs> if you knew what the um, code is, I can also right mouse click. I can go to Edit Learn Data, and I can paste it directly into the um, script editor here. If for those who have worked with um, Pronto, I can import and convert it hex Pronto codes. Again, I can cut and paste them straight in there rather than having to learn them in. Um, so once we've got all the buttons that we want to learn in there, I can click OK and now we'll see it listed on there. So we've got our living room TV, our Sony one that we imported and others that we have um, learnt in manually ourselves. So there's a couple of examples of how we can add devices into the Genie when working with IR.